A large portion of traffic to most websites is mobile, so why should native apps be the only ones with nice interactions? Today, we're going to build a drawer component, which you can drag to close using React, Frame or Motion, and Tailwind CSS. You can find the same interaction on just about every mobile app ever. Source code available in both JavaScript and TypeScript on my website, along with a bunch of other cool stuff. If you want to check that out, let's get started. So I have a pretty basic little setup here. I'm going to try to speed through most of the actual styling and layout stuff here, just because it's not really as important as the actual drag interaction. So to actually take a look at what we have so far, all that I have is this wrapping div. It's the height of the screen with a display of grid. Place content centered actually put everything in the middle of the screen, and then just this dark background neutral 950 color. Obviously, do whatever you want with this. Then just a button in here with some rounded corners and some padding and background and stuff. Again, we just need something to trigger open and close of the modal, but make this whatever you want. To actually start putting this together, I'm gonna to start by just creating a piece of state called open and set open using the use state hook and defaulting that to false. We can then pass that into the on click of our button down here and just say, whenever we click this, we want to set open to true. Obviously this is not going to do anything just yet. Down below my main component, I'm gonna create a new component for our drawer. I'm gonna call it drag close drawer. This for right now can just return, let's just do an empty fragment and we can render that under our button like this. Now this is gonna take in three different props. It needs both open and set open, as well as the children prop, which is going to be anything that's rendered in here. This way we can use the same component for whatever we want. So I'll go ahead and pass those in. First, I need to pass in open and set open just like this as normal props. And then we just need some random text in here so we can actually see something. So you can add whatever you want. You know, you can add some lorem ipsum or something. I have some basic little markup here that's just a bunch of paragraphs with lorem ipsum text in it. You can totally feel free to steal that from the source code in the description, but I'm not going to take the time to actually walk through this. If you want to, you know, take a quick look at the styling I have on this, feel free. But for right now, I'm just going to leave this as is. Now, obviously, we need to actually take these props into our drawer component here. So I'm going to destructure those like this, open, set, open, and children. And if we just want to see something random rendering on the screen, we can totally just drop in the children prop in here. And we should just see a bunch of random text in here now. Yep, there we go. So we can see our stuff rendering. Obviously, that's not exactly what we want, though. So I'm going to remove that. And what we actually want to do is we only want to render this component if we are currently open. So I can say open and, oops, and like this. And then we want to render a motion.div. Oops, motion.div. So motion is gonna be an import that we're going to get from the framer motion package. I'll come up to the top. I'll say import motion from framer motion. If you haven't already installed Framer Motion, just npm install or yarn add Framer Motion. Now this outer motion.div is going to essentially just make up like a, a backdrop component. So if we just wanna see what that looks like really quick, I'll just give this some class names. I'm gonna give it a position of fixed and then an inset of zero so that it takes up the full size of the screen. I'm gonna give it a Z index of 50 so it sits in front of everything else. And then I'll just give it a background color. So I'll say background, say neutral 950, but then give it some opacity. So I'll say something like 70. So now we should see that whenever we click this button here, we now have our overlay. And obviously we wanna also be able to get rid of that and we wanna animate it in and out. So let's start by just animating it in and out. This is probably the easiest piece of this. I'm just gonna come and set our initial state with frame or motion. You have these declarative props that let you define the initial state of the styling of your component and then how you want to actually animate those. So in my case, the initial state is just going to be an opacity of zero. And I want to animate that using the animate prop to an opacity of one. If we try that again now, we should see that whenever I click this, it slowly fades in. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, what I would like is clicking anywhere on this backdrop to also close this modal. We'll have the drag piece in a bit as well, but generally on desktop, people are gonna wanna just be able to click anywhere outside of the actual modal itself. So to do that, I'm going to add a new function and pass it into on click. I'm going to call it handle close and we're going to define that up here in our component say const handle close and for right now we can just say set open and pass in false now if I click on this we should see that it goes away open and then fades away if you're familiar with frame or motion you might think that I'm going to end up using something like animate presence here and then we can actually have an exit animation as well we're not gonna do that for this specific example. I wanna have a little bit more control over how our exit animation works. And that's gonna be because we wanna actually animate from wherever we've actually dragged the modal to or the drawer to. And it's a little bit difficult to do that using your normal exit props. So instead of doing it with an animate presence or something like that, 
Eventually, this handle close function is going to have some additional logic for actually animating the presence or animating the opacity out, stuff like that. I'm probably getting a little bit too deep into the weeds with this, so let's just continue and we'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in a second. Next up, inside of this motion div, we just want an additional component for our actual drawer itself. That's going to be a motion div as well. And we can just start by adding our basic styles for this. So I'll open up a class name call like this. We can give this a position of absolute, a bottom of zero a height of, I think I did 75 viewport height last time, so 75 VH, give it a width of full, an overflow of hidden. I wanna round the top corners, so we'll say rounded T, three X, XL, and then I'll give it a background of neutral 900. Now we can try opening this up, and now we have our little drawer component right here, and we can animate this in as well. So that's gonna look very similar to what we did right here with our initial and animate like this. So down on this motion.div, I'm actually just gonna drop in these styles as well, but we're not gonna do opacity animations, and instead we're going to do Y transform animations. My initial state is going to be a Y transform of 100%, and we are going to animate that to 0%. Now, if I open this back up, we should actually see that animate. There we go. Nice, we have this cool little springy animation. Do it again, really slow, nice. Now, one thing I don't love actually is that kind of spring for this exact example, because we're gonna see if you look closely at the bottom here that it kind of overshoots the bottom. I don't think that looks super great. I would rather have just kind of like a normal ease in out transition. So under my initial and animate here, I'm going to add a transition prop and I'm going to pass in an ease and the easing function that I want is ease in out. Now, if we open this again, we should see that we get a smoother animation, just like this. One thing that we're gonna notice with this is that anytime I actually click on the modal itself or the drawer itself, this is still gonna go away. And that's because our click is propagating to this background div that also has an on click on it, which is closing our modal. In order to fix that back over on my div, I'm going to add an on click to this as well. And that is just going to take in the event and call the event.stop propagation method. And this will stop us from actually closing the modal anytime we click on the modal itself. Now, just a little bit more for the layout. We need some actual content in here, obviously. So inside of this div, I'm gonna actually have two additional elements in here, one for our handle, like our drag handle and another for actually rendering the content. Let's start with the content one first, just so we can see what's actually going on here. I'll just create a div and I will pass in children and this should just render our actual content in here now. Yep, looks good. Obviously, we want some padding and things on this. So for that, I'm going to give this a class name. It's going to need a position of relative because we need it to sit behind some other stuff and a Z index of zero, a height of full and an overflow Y of scroll. And then I'm gonna add a padding of four on all sides, but then a padding top of 12 for the top. We'll see why in just a second. And now we should have all of our content in here and we can kind of scroll down to see it all. So that looks pretty good. Now I added this additional padding at the top because I wanna be able to render one more div above this. And I want that to be absolutely positioned up at the top. And that's going to house our little drag handle thing. This div is going to have some class names. So it's gonna have a position of absolute, a left and a right both of zero, a top of zero, a Z index of 10, a display of flex and justify center. I'll give this a background of neutral 900 as well and a padding of four to just give this a bit of space. And then inside of this, we just need our little button drag handle thing. So finally, to finish up our layout, I'll just create a button component. This doesn't actually need any content inside of it. It just needs some class names. So for our class names, I'm gonna give it a height of two a width of 14, a cursor of grab, to a cursor of grab. Very importantly, we actually need a touch of none. So in normal CSS, if you haven't seen this before, this is just touch action none. This is going to allow us to actually have this work on touch screens. I'm also then gonna give this a rounded of full, a background of neutral 700, and whenever we're actually dragging, so active, I want to use cursor grabbing. And there we go. Now we have our little item up here. Obviously it's not draggable yet, but we can scroll. Everything goes behind that top piece and eventually we'll be able to actually grab and drag on this handle. To get a basic version of the actual dragging up and running is actually relatively simple. So I'm just gonna come on my inner div right here and I'm gonna add a prop called drag. By default, this is gonna go in both directions directions, but we just want the Y axis. So I'll set drag equal to Y. And now I should be able to grab anywhere on my element and drag it up and down. This is not exactly what we want though, right? Like I don't want to be able to drag in my text in here. That makes it a little bit annoying. I just want to be able to drag up here. And I also don't want to be able to drag up. Like that looks kind of stupid. So we can go about fixing a couple of those problems. First things first, I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to import a hook called use drag controls. 
Use drag controls allow us to define what actually controls are dragging. So I'll just say controls equals use drag controls. And then I'll come down to my div and pass in our drag controls right here. I kind of misspoke a little bit. Essentially what drag controls let you do is just start your animation based on whatever event that you want. So scroll up a little bit, look something like controls.start. And then you can call this from whatever element you want and actually pass it in the element that is starting this animation. So in our case, that's going to look something like this. Well, actually a little bit ahead of myself. So one other thing we should note is this is actually not gonna get rid of the dragging. It's just going to give us a way to drag based on other elements, but I do want to stop this from being draggable as well. And to do that, all that we have to do is come down and add a drag listener prop equal to false. Saving that now anywhere that I try and drag, whether it's down here or up here is not going to work. But obviously we do want this little button element to still be draggable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come onto my button and I'm gonna set a on pointer down function. And inside of that, I'm just going to take our event and I'm going to pass it to controls.start. And with just a little bit of code, I should now be able to come up to my handle right here and start dragging our element around. Now this can still drag up, which I don't really like. You know, we're dragging the whole element up and that looks a little bit silly. And it also doesn't snap into position. So like if I drag this down here and let go, it's staying down there, which if I just drag it, you know, if I drag it that far, I want it to go away. But if I just drag it a little bit, I kind of want it to just snap back into position. And there are two different props that we can actually use to define those. I'm just gonna drop them in and we'll kind of explain what they're doing. So down under my drag listener false here, I'm gonna set two new props. One is called drag constraints. You can actually look at these one at a time. So drag constraints, I'm setting a top of zero and a bottom of zero. And essentially what that means is I don't wanna have any additional give either up or down besides this slight elasticity. And whenever I let go, I just want it to snap back to zero pixels, right? Like I don't wanna be able to drag it down 50 pixels and just leave it there. What this drag elastic does is actually defines how elastic that drag is. So on the top, I don't actually wanna be able to drag up at all. I just want it to be kind of like brick walled. And on the bottom, I'll give it a little bit extra give. So now if I try and drag up brick wall, but if I drag down, it still lets me drag. In order to actually close this element whenever we drag down, we just need to know how far we've actually dragged this element so far. And specifically, we need to know that whenever we let up from our cursor or on drag end. So we need two little things for that. We need a callback on drag end, and then we need our variable for actually tracking this value. In order to track this value, we need to use a motion value. So I'll define my variable for this as just Y, so it's easy to track. And I'll set that equal to use motion value which we can define as zero. This is kind of like a normal state hook, but the way that you're actually gonna access this value is just with something like y.get. And all that we need to do to actually track the change of this value is come down to our div and open up a style tag and then pass in our value like this. In order to actually see this change, let's come down under our transition right here and create a new prop called on drag end. This will just take a callback function. And for now we can just say console.log our y dot get. Now looking over in my console, if I drag down and let go, we should see exactly how far we dragged the modal down. So 75 pixels that time, drag it farther, 190 pixels, cool. Now we can close this beyond some certain point. So I'll remove our console log and replace that with an if statement. We'll just say if y dot get is greater than say 100 pixels, then we'll call our existing handle close function. And if we take a look, we should now be able to drag just a little bit and it doesn't close. But if I drag a bunch and then let go, it goes away. Sweet, so we're making progress. I think the last piece of this is just animating this out. So whenever it closes, it doesn't just kind of immediately disappear. And the way that we're gonna do that, like I kind of briefly mentioned earlier is manually, we're not gonna use exit animations or exit props like this. And the reason is that can be a little bit tricky when using a separate variable, because really we wanna animate from this value, this y.get value to 100%. We don't wanna just animate from 0% to 100%, which is kind of what this would give you, but fortunately pretty easy to do it manually. So to start, I'm gonna scroll up to the top and in place of this import that I don't need anymore, I'm going to import the use animate hook. Use animate is also a hook that you're gonna get from frame motion. And this is going to give you some controls, essentially like a ref and some controls for animating elements directly. The way that you'll generally see this use is something like this. So I'll say const and then the same way as like a use state hook, but the two values that we're gonna do structure are scope, that's a ref that you're gonna to pass to an element, and then animate, which is your actual function for animating that element and anything within that element. And then we'll just set those equal to use animate. I cannot type, animate. So with our scope, we want to pass it to our outer wrapping div because we wanna be able to animate both our outer wrapping div as well as this div that's right here. 
In order to make it just a little bit easier to hook into this div, I'm just gonna add an ID here as well of drawer, call it whatever you want. But now we can go about actually closing or running our exit animations inside of our handle close function. So let's start by just animating the opacity of this element out the same way that we do whenever we kind of enter, right? Like it animates from zero to one. And one thing that's actually cool about our animate prop is that it's async or our animate function rather. So we can actually make our function asynchronous and then by simply awaiting our animate function like this, it will actually wait to run our animations before it calls set open and passes in false. So essentially this is gonna give us a basic exit animation. To animate the opacity of the entire element, we can just start by passing in scope.current. Scope.current is just gonna reference directly this ref right here. And then we'll just pass in our normal styles like usual. So I'll just say, I wanna animate my opacity from zero to one. And I did that backwards actually, one, two, zero. There we go. Now we should see that whenever this closes, it slowly fades out. Now the piece of this for actually animating this drawer out is just a little bit trickier. So let's see how that works. I'm actually gonna start by removing the await from this first call. That's because I want that to run at the same time as this second one. So for this, we'll just say animate as well, but instead of passing in our scope, we want to actually fetch this element right here with the ID of drawer. So we'll say that we're targeting ID of drawer. And then we want to animate the Y transform of this from the, essentially the current position. So like the Y starting position of wherever we've dragged it to. So, you know, if we've dragged it to here, we want to start from here. If we want to drag it from here, we want to start from there. And we want to animate that to the entire height of the full drawer. So we want to go essentially 100%, but we need to animate from one number to another number. So we can't just do like 100% here. So let's see how we can get both of those values. First, let's define our y start variable. So we'll just say const y start. And essentially what we want for this is the current y value of whatever this motion value is right here. We do have one small issue with this though, and that's kind of based on how I set this up. So we'll see that I define this as a number to start, right? Like y motion value zero. And that's what we're expecting this to be. But if we don't actually drag this, what we'll notice right here is our initial animation of Y is from 100% to 0%. What that essentially ends up getting us is a Y value that is not actually a number anymore. It's gonna be 0%. So that kind of breaks what we're trying to do here, right? Like we want this to always be a number. Fortunately, we can kind of just default that, which is easy enough. So I'll just say if type of Y.get is a number, then we can actually just use our y.get, else we'll just set it to zero. Now, before I actually get my height, let's just set this to say 500, just so we can test this out. I can start by just clicking up here and it should animate out. And I can also try dragging, drag a little bit, shouldn't close, drag more and it should animate out. Sweet, so now instead of doing 500, just really as a final little polish, let's make sure that we're actually using the legitimate full 100% height of this element. You could use like the bounding box of the element, stuff like that, but I was playing around and I kind of like this new hook that I've been using for kind of purposes like this. So I'm gonna use that instead. Coming up to the top under my frame or motion imports, I'm going to import one more hook called use measure, and that comes from react use measure. Again, maybe this is a little bit overkill, but I like kind of how this looks in code. So I'm gonna do it this way. Please tell me it's wrong in the comments. And the way that this works is super, super simple. It's actually kind of like, looks a little bit like use animate. So I'll come down below my frame or motion hooks and I'll make one more that I'm just going to destructure a couple of values from. The first one is going to be a ref, similar to scope, and I'll call that drawer ref. We'll set that equal to use measure and we'll pass our draw ref onto this ref right here, or onto this div right here, Let's say ref is equal to draw ref. And the second value that we can destructure from this is the actual sizes. So I can actually just come in here and grab height, and this will give me the height of this element. Now that I have the height of this element, I can pass that directly into our Y transform. So we're going from wherever the current value of Y is to the full height. And all of this works because we're able to asynchronously wait on this animation before we actually set our open to false. So now giving that a shot, drag it down just a little bit, let go, and it goes back up to the top, drag it down a little bit more, let go, and it animates perfectly out of the screen. And that is pretty much gonna wrap us up. Once again, you can grab all of this code from the link in my description. If you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Anyways, until next time, peace.